So like right now, it looks edible, but really, you could like drive a tent stake in with this thing. Does that work for everybody? Okay, so uh, shanks are another chunk of meat that should never be left in the woods. I mean really, I just tell people like take one extra thing that you normally wouldn't take and just try it out. Like what's the worst that can happen? Um, the unfortunate like end result is you'll find that every single part of any of these beasts is highly, not only edible, but very, very good. So shanks, I tried to bring out whole, and this is an elk shank. And here's like a nice chunk of boned out elk shank, and these are mule deer shanks. Uh, we uh, browned them all up and got them a little smoky in the uh, pellet grill and just salt and pepper, olive oil, uh, just a little bit of grease. But, you know, this is something that's covered in blue skin. It's covered in fascia. Like I say, you could like hammer a tent stake in with these things. Uh, and a lot of people just don't know what to do with them. They try to like bone them out and put them in the grind pile, but it's like 20 minutes of boning these things or getting rid of that blue skin to just to grind the stuff and it's not worth doing. So bring them out whole if you can, or bring them out in chunks and just slow cook them. You can put them in a pressure cooker, you can put them in the crock pot. This is gonna be uh, in a sous vide, which is a water immersion bath. And we'll get more into that, but this is just seared. I'm gonna start putting them in bags. And then I made uh, this like super smoky adobo sauce. And they'll, the adobo sauce will go in the bag with each shank. Um, they're gonna cook all day long. And uh, then at the end, pull them out, chunk them up, and make uh, like street tacos out of them. This is what you want when you try to brown something. Doing it on the grill is a little bit different than doing it in a pan uh, or under the broiler, but you definitely want that meat to seize up. Uh, shallots, onions, garlic, a little bit of coffee, some red wine. It does kind of make your life easier if you can avoid getting too much liquid up on the top. Yeah, for the sealing process. Yeah. And that's why I brought out the big tub. That's a lot of volume pushing around, but did pretty good on the seal. There's a little bit of air in there, but everything's heavy enough to stay down. And that water is hot. So I really like sous vide um, for really long cooks. Uh, I have the temperature up higher on this than I typically would because we're trying to make things happen a little bit faster for um, you know the YouTube side of things. Really the way I've come to look at this, just totally experimenting and screwing around, is this is a more forgiving, uh, more accurate crock pot. Um, so, you know, if you, you don't have to rush home from work to like pull something out of the crock pot because you're afraid it's going to scald or something like that. But you're accomplishing pretty much the same thing in here uh, as you are in the crock pot. So, um, shanks are a perfect crock pot meal. Typically this osobuco um, is a shank that's been cut into disc, you brown it, and then you braise it, which is just simmering in liquid for a long amount of time. Don't be afraid of shanks. I mean, they're pretty damn simple. Pretty much everybody has a crock pot. It's a great way to do it. Mule deer shank. Yeah, just gonna peel that sucker off at home. All right, so mule deer shank out of the sous vide. Got a lot of good color from the adobo sauce, and it's obviously falling off the bone. Which, depending on who you are, is good or bad. But for our purposes, good.
So there's like your super hard, nasty, inedible shank. Do super simple. I'm not a big rice fan, which is typically how you get adobo. So, but this is my house, and I'm not playing by those rules. Cotilla, little cilantro. Everything's like nuclear, burning my fingers hot. But I'm not a complainer. Okay, and some sacks. So that's uh, mule deer shank. Adobo street taco. Mm-hmm. That's real good. Mm-hmm. I just can't quit putting it in my mouth. Do you want a taco? <laughs> Alright, so, uh, you know, the shank that we talked about before, it's this super dense muscle much more dense than my weak office arms. Like you can drive a tent stake in with these things. Most folks, or there's a lot of people who leave them in the woods, which is just flat out wrong. A lot of folks get them out of the woods and they get them to the butcher's table and they're like, what the hell do I do with these things? Because it takes so long to get the blue skin off and the sinew. Just cook it really low and slow. You don't have to trim anything off. Just get the dirt and the hair off of there and cook it slow and it'll turn into like this gooey awesomeness. And you can see like, this is a tendon that is totally turned into gelatin. And that's the super, super tasty stuff here. Like that's a full tendon that's now like liquid. And that's, that's what you want. Yeah. All right guys, I'm super stoked about this. Like I said, we quarter everything out so the shank always goes with us, but it always goes into the like the burger pile. Which, I mean, you get a ton of burger off an elk or an, and a deer, and burger's great, but I would love to have solid meat that I can make tacos with, like this, like Cal did, out of the shank. So I'm gonna try it and tell you how, how I feel about it. It's a really nice day. I can't, I'm more of a favorite, I like it. Dude, that's so good. Yeah, it's kind of unique meat too. Very you know, unique. So. But the flavor, like, yeah, tastes like a straight up street taco yeah. from LA. Maybe. Good. Taco truck stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's a compliment. That's good. Yeah, heck yeah. So cool, guys. So many people either leave this meat in the woods, which is ridiculous, or they make burger out of it. All this recipe you can turn your drinks into legitimate street tacos.